Hello and welcome back. Bitwig Studio 2, beginner's course. Uh, this is uh, the second tutorial and we're going to be covering the, basically the, the main screen here. We're just going to, there's a lot of material to cover so we're just going to take a look at the interface and kind of see what Bitwig has to offer. So there are some changes so if you're familiar with Bitwig Studio 1 some of this will be similar to what you've already done and there might be a few other ways a uh, few other new wrinkles here that you'll enjoy learning so basically we're looking at you know three different panels here we've got an inspector we've got um, an arrange and we've got a device and if I click down here on this little folder icon I can get my browser samples and browser information and my access to my um, material on my hard drive so all right, so let's take a look at a couple things going on here. So the inspector right here on the left is kind of context sensitive, I guess you could say. It's going to update and reflect information pertinent to what you have selected currently. I have an um, instrument track uh, selected, so it's giving me any information that's uh, specific to that instrument track. But if there was a clip here, it would update to the clip. Uh, and, and things like that. So the inspector is context sensitive and, and just more detailed information about specifically what you're working on or what you have selected. Let's say we don't want to see the inspector. We don't we don't necessarily need that of available to us. We can simply press the letter I on our keyboard to hide and open. Letter I. Or you can just go down to the I icon right here and select that to open and close it as well. So keyboard shortcut letter I or select the I icon below. So what do we have next here? I'm gonna actually leave it there for now I guess. Um, we have the mix panel. So if I select the mix panel right here on the bottom it's gonna open up the uh, mix display which is gonna give us our volume controls and you know our different scenes and things like that so again there's a keyboard shortcut for that that is the letter M for mix and I'll go back to the arrange so let's take a look at edit if I select edit now we're it's showing my edit panel here my editor I can move this down and enlarge and leave it up. I can move this guy out of the way and enlarge and, and can, you know, a lot of flexibility for screen real estate there. So, all right. So let me go back to the arrange. And one, one of the other things you'll notice is in the arrange window, everything's going to work from left to right. So when you're looking at the scroll bar here, you see the numbers, you know, reflecting the count of the bars from left to right. If I need to zoom in, you can see when I when I hover over the top there, my mouse turns into a magnifying glass. Then I can simply zoom in and zoom out by pushing up and down. I can also do that same zoom in, zoom out feature here on the bottom on this little gray bar by zooming in and zooming out, pushing up and down, clicking, holding, and pushing up and down with my mouse. So what else do we got uh, here on the interface? We have our browser panel that we have open over here. So what we can do here is we can uh, look at any packages we may have downloaded we talked about in the previous tutorial. So all those will be available to us here. We can actually access um, you know different devices, presets, samples, multi samples, any music that you have on your hard drive you can access there, clips, and files. So all the information you need to access will be available to you right here in this browser panel accessed by the folder right here. So I'm going to close that out of the way. And what, what else do we got? We got some buttons down here. We've got four buttons down here. This first one is our editor panel. So if I click this, it's going to show this editor panel here below. Let me bring that up for us a little bit. And then we can look at track editing or clip editing since I don't have anything in there we're not going to see anything but that is the editor and again that is a keyboard shortcut of the letter E and there's a little bit of a trend here you'll see for these next four so 
kind of as you learn and as you start to work with Bitwig, kind of get used to the shortcuts. They, they really come in handy for workflow. So the letter E opens and closes the editor on your uh, computer keyboard. Next, we have the show automation lane. And again, that's another shortcut. We can click on the icon here and it's going to bring up the automation lane for anything that we're working on. And we can, you know, look a little bit closer at our automation. But if you select the letter A, that's going to open and close it as well from my keyboard. So E, Editor, A, Automation. So imagine you probably guess where this is going. The device panel is the letter D. And this, or you can click the icon. And this is going to bring up a panel where we can open and access um, any devices that we want to bring in for that specific channel that we're working on. So letter D for device to open and close. And the last is the mixer panel. And that would be the letter M. So not too difficult if you think about it. Letter M opens and closes the mixer panel. Letter D, device. A, automation, and E for editor. Love that. Very, very easy, simple stuff to work with here. So um, let me see what we haven't covered. All right, so we've got some stuff across the top here, kind of a toolbar or header, whatever you want to refer to it as. Let's take a look at it. So the uh, squares with the um, little white triangles at the bottom here mean that there's going to be additional information if we click on there there's going to be a menu context for us to review so we click file and now we've got a, a several different choices here to select from as far as what specifically what action we want to take so we can new project save collect and save and all that fun stuff so we'll close that guy and then we've got play but that's not play as in, in the sense that it's going to start the playhead moving and the project uh, audio being um, Played. It's actually kind of a menu for how you want Bitwig to play things. So here you can see all your different choices um, as far as what's available to you. So let's take a look at uh, how to personalize this um, this toolbar or this um, header. And one of the ways you can do that, you can see off to the right here of these different actions. Say like, you know, overdub. things like that, you have these pins. These pins, if you select, will add it to the bar, to the toolbar up here, or the header. You see how we got overdub now available to us as a quick action. Or I can take it away by deselecting the pin. You know, you have your automation right that you can add, but it's already there. Overdub, enable groove, which I'll leave on because I like to have that one available to me. So. These pins are pretty important as far as personalizing what you have up here available to you. Then you got latch, touch, and write modes here as well as far as automation and write. Um, we you know, won't get into too much of the detail here. It's more about just showing you the menu and how to personalize things. So we'll move away from there. We've got play, stop, record, and then we've got our automation write and our groove access that we just um, set up. Here is your CPU load or CPU uh, DSP performance graph. It's floatable. Once you select it, it opens up and it shows you what's going on here. So something to always be aware of, you know, keep an eye on this. It also shows that the buffer size uh, that we selected and the sample rate that we're going to be working with. So if you're seeing some issues or some spikes, performance uh, issues, you can always go in and change your buffer size and, and make the necessary adjustments. So. And that's just by clicking on and off this uh, square up here that allows us to access that information. Here you've got your tempo, your time signature, the position your playhead's in, the seconds into the project that you are. You've got your metronome, loop, punch in, punch out. And then here we've got context-specific uh, menus as well. Depending on what I'm doing here, so if I select this track, this instrument, you see how this updated to track and then if there was a clip here it would update to a clip or an event or a note if i'm working with MIDI, it would update to note so these that's going to be more context specific menus but here we can go to add and again it's got the white triangle so we know there's more information 
we can go add instrument, add audio, um, add group, things like that. So if there's a specific function that you do repetitively over and over and over again, it might be good, just like we talked about earlier, to just go ahead and pin it. So now I've got instrument track and audio track selected and pinned. So now just by selecting these, I'm, allow I'm allowing myself to quick access to do those, th those things and continue to add tracks. So I typically have those up here and available for myself. Now edit is going to give us, you know, the undo insert tracks and, and it's going to give us cut, copy, paste features and functions and things like that. It's basic editing. So, and again, we can pin these up here if we want. So you can kind of customize that any way you like. Then you've got your undo and redo and there's a duplicate feature here. So if I wanted to select something and duplicate it, that would work for tracks. That would work for clips. If there's a clip down here that we have selected, we can duplicate it instruments, devices, whatever we want. So, and then on track menu, we've got our necessary track uh, actions and, and features here within this menu that if we want to pin those and customize those, that's, that's wonderful as well. It's all available to us. So um, let me see if we've missed anything. Just a good overview. Okay. So one of the things I talked about in the previous tutorial, now that we talked about how to customize and the basic layout and what we're looking at here and what we want, how, what if we wanted to, every time Bitwig opens, have it always open to the way we have it customized and the way we want things to look. So what you can do is under File and Settings within your dashboard, Behavior is where you want to go. So under Behavior, you can see I've got something called Vic Vapor's Default Template. And I selected that to use as a template for new projects. So essentially that's an action that always opens up a specific template that I've saved. So the first thing you want to do is let's, I'm not going to save this particular one, but you would want to, let's say this is the one we want. And this is the look that we want Bitwig to always open up and present to us. You would just go to file, save as a template, select your save as a template, save, and then you title it, which I've got mine, Vic Vapor's default template. And then you tell it to save it, you know, as, as far as a template and title it whatever you want. And I put mine as a description for default starting template. You simply select OK. I'm going to cancel that. But once you have that saved, then you can go back here to the dashboard under settings and behavior. And you can go you select this square, but first you go through your browser and you find that template, which is right here, default template, select it. And then once it's selected and the check marks on, Bitwig will always open with that personalized template and that personalized um, interface the way you want it. So that is a quick overview um, of Bitwig 2, Bitwig Studio 2's interface. So let's move on to the next tutorial and look a little bit more about at the, um, the clip launcher and some of the arranged features and things like that. So, all right.